Hi guys, welcome back to the Once You're In, You're In podcast. This is episode number 64 and this week we have got a special guest. I've, I've just put him into the waiting room. We've just had a quick catch up so we know that his, uh, his signal is all right. But yeah, we've just benched him after the uh, after yeah. the weekend. Do we have anything we want to chat about first before we bring him in, mate? Um, we can do our usual. How's life, mate? I've just gone through a deload. Been a well-needed deload. How's your How's your week been away from me, mate? I've been doing TikTok antics, haven't I? Yeah. Apparently, yeah, what is that really about? Good. Like every, what is it about, mate? Mate, every time I message you and say where are you, because I get to the gym on time, and you're like, oh, I'm doing this for TikTok. I'm doing that for TikTok. So I'm just like, TikTok. never happened. Yes, it has. Never happened. Finn's lying. You went Finn's to lying. Why did you go to London this week then? Uh, oh fuck! I had a my protein meetup. Exactly. Yeah, we were sampling clear weight. I just sampling clear weight. So, yeah, a few new samples, mate. I had uh, a few photo shoots. Um, Marbella trip soon. I've got everything planned, and uh, it's just all going to be coming out soon. I'm on forty nine and a bit k followers on TikTok, mate. You're not so made it's fifty yet. Thought you'd be fifty. Hmm? Thought you'd be on fifty. No, nah, no. Nah, I need. I need to do a collab. I'm going to do some collabs with some other TikTokers, and uh, and we're gonna yeah. Yeah, they're gonna FYP for your pay hashtag FYP. Do you know what that means, mate? It's like a hashtag on TikTok, and it meet it basically it's like a hashtag for you, you page. So yeah, you don't know, mate. Like it is what it is. You're too old at this point. You're 25. You know uh, the the youth of today, aka is, me, yeah. is coming through and just you know, I do need taking to, over uh, on TikTok. I need to start posting on TikTok. Yeah, you'd have so many followers, mate. I mean, you've got me and one other person, I think, right now. And you don't even follow me back. I don't use it. I went on it once and looked at your things, commented on it, and then I haven't been on it since. Yeah, why didn't you follow me, mate? This is I don't like, know. I, it's mean... like an old person with a new app. I don't know how. Like I just haven't even used it. So anyway, all this. How was the deload? Yeah, lovely, really good. Um, I had from. I was gonna push it to the weekend. Um, I, I the last two or three weeks, my body has just felt pretty battered. But I said to you, like my, the want to train is always there. Like I rarely ever, like I rarely ever will wake up and go, I don't want to train. I, even when I'm absolutely redlined and overreached massively, like I'll know. Oh, so I still, I still want to train. I still, I still want to get to the gym. So I always struggle to kind of actually assess other areas but i could tell sleep quality sleep duration i was waking up a lot my appetite was very low i'd also been ill so that definitely didn't help my wrist and my shoulder my left side were like just not like my, my pec and my lap musculature wasn't firing and that's led to a few issues down that left side like my left shoulder my left elbow and even my left wrist has like been causing me some grief so it was like every sign of like your body saying pull back you need a little bit of time so I took from, I was going to say, I was going to push on for a few more days, but I had Monday and Tuesday session and I was just wiped out. So I had from Tuesday off. Um, so it was a full pretty much six, seven days. Um, definitely needed. Uh, from Sunday night, I was in London with, with Sanaya. So we literally Monday went through Westminster, which was cool. Got some like electric powered bikes. So did some TV on some electric powered bike, but crashed about five or so times. I really? uh, did some like, touristy that. sort of stuff. Yeah, no, it was good fun. It was really good fun, to be fair. Um, and then on Tuesday, we uh, went shopping, did like 20,000 steps because we went at like 2.33 and we were all going out for, for dinner in the evening. So we couldn't, we could go back to the hotel, but we were going to be out for like the whole afternoon and like just walking around like a, like obviously a, a main location, like, you know, like sidestepping people, going upstairs, like stop start I was on my feet for like six seven hours so I came back and I weighed myself I came back yesterday I weighed myself this morning I was a kilo and a half down because uh, I was eating like three meals a day I brought some food there um but obviously when you when you're out and about you're not that hungry like I didn't really fancy eating like loads of food and I'm not I'm not I don't want to be like getting in loads of calories so I just got in what I could I probably had like somewhat of a maintenance but then at the same time my uh, my expenditure was high so yeah from a from a physical standpoint I feel pretty good um granted Monday and Tuesday were tiring moving around constantly but uh that's gonna be the case doing loads of steps but it was it was a nice break mental break um I feel mentally refreshed and we know in bodybuilding you can't be all you can't be all or nothing anymore you have to have times of pulling back so, you have to have maintenance. Are you on a six month maintenance now after the deload? No, no, I had a yeah, I had a week week deload. Now I'm gonna run a maintenance block. Um, no, in all seriousness, my food's probably gonna go up tomorrow because I'm a kilo and a half up. 
um, collectively from when I got back from August, from, from, from August, from Turkey in August. So I was like, right, food's going up tomorrow. I haven't changed food for the last couple of weeks, uh, for like the last three or four. So food increase coming in tomorrow, which will do me good. Probably pushing to like 112 ish kilos, I'd imagine, which will be, which will be nice. And, uh, and then training wise, first session back yesterday was pretty much spot on back to normal volume. And yeah, all good. All good. Time to get a little bit stronger and have a good end to 2022. What about yourself, mate? How's the, how's the week been without me? You've enjoyed it? Yeah, it's been sound, mate. Not even noticed you've been gone. So good. It's been so good. It's been, yeah, like been, so nice. it's, been a, it's been a good week. Yeah, it has. Um, feeling good, eating more food. Enjoyed the show at the weekend, but we won't go into that because we'll chat about that with Josh. Um, mm. But yeah, generally all is good. Body weight is like holding at 188 pounds, even though I'm like adding food every couple of days. So I clearly need more food, which is fine. Um, appetite's like the best it's been. Like my appetite was not like non-existent, but like even right at the end of the diet, I wasn't hungry at all. And then when you start adding more food and obviously oh, it goes up and performance goes up, like, and you start like feeling better and feeling fuller and looking better. Like now I'm like almost, I'm not thinking about food more, but. Like I'm almost like well, I'm ready for meals more and I'm like excited to eat more. And I'm also, cause I'm adding more food, I'm adding like different things. So I've got more fruit in the diet, like more rice. Like I didn't have rice in my diet for ages. Cause I was eating so much rice before like I was eating, getting through a shit ton of rice every day. Mm. And now like adding rice back in, it's like, Oh, I've proper missed having rice. An actual um, shit ton, an actual ton an actual of shit, ton shit ton, mate. I was having loads of rice. I was getting, mate, I was, I was getting through, I'm trying to think how much rice I was having at like, across a week it must have been like a good like three four kilos of rice every week so i was buying rice all the time like the big like five kilo bags of rice like all the time um jasmine rice it has to be jasmine rice because it digests so well uh but yeah i'm feeling good everything's good performance is on the up um yeah feeling spot on really ready to improve Obviously, the show at the weekend is like, as much as I don't need that extra bit of fuel, like it's nice to see like, right, this is where the standards are. This is where I want to be. Um, it's not just nice to be in and around it, isn't it? So it was good. Yeah. But yeah, was. Right. we do have yeah. one of the uh, WMBF judges in the waiting room. He's probably gone, mate. We've left him in there for that long. So we're going to bring him in. Are you yeah, ready? Should we, should we sub him in? Let's see we'll if he's ready. What are you doing? Oh, mate. The webcam turns on. He's just gone. Has he left? <laughs> What did he say? Josh? He, uh, what's no, he no, doing? He, he, no, it's just kicked him off. I don't know. Let me. Can you see? His name was at the top one. It's gone now. No, no, no. I can't see it because I don't think I'm host. All right, let me send him another one. Bless him. Watch him. He's probably got upset. And he's been kicked. <laughs> That's what you do. You kicked him. We kept him waiting for half an hour and he was like, oh, these motherfuckers. Yeah, how long has it been? It's been about five minutes. Yeah. To be fair, you did you yeah. did ramble on, mate. We Ram- did... Ramble on, mate. I've got. I'm speaking about my D load. Yeah, you're no talking about cares. eating three to four kg of rice when you were, mate. You're talking about eating three to four kg of rice when you were literally like eighty pounds too heavy in so... in an off season. You ate too much food. You don't, need, you don't need to tell people you ate too much food, mate. Everybody knows you ate too much. I didn't food. eat too much food. You know these are the things. Yeah, yeah. This, these are the things that like are quite normal. You know. Right, where the fuck's Josh? Is Josh is Josh gonna join? We'll just have to crack on. I've uh, I've messaged him. I've said new link as you've left, and then I said Josh, please come back. Um, come back, right? He sacked us off. Yeah, do you want to get into a question or whatever, mate? And then we'll go into so we can keep things ticking over. Have you got many questions? Did uh, we get Did we get through them? You. Did we get through them from last week? Yeah. I think we, we blitzed through them, didn't we? I'm pretty sure. I got round to all of mine. I'm not too sure about all of yours. But uh, but either way, like I said, while we're waiting for Josh, um, we've got a uh, we've got a few questions. I'll go through them. So this will be quite a good thing. So would you rather be a skinny natty, skinny natty forever, Finn, or peak bulk forever? Which one would you prefer, mate? We've got two options. Peak bulk, so we're talking like £230 for Finn. And then, or just skinny natty, which I, I guess, like you've you've kind of been both. Which would you prefer to be, mate? Skinny natty or skinny fat peak bulk? Are we, what are we classing as skinny natty? Yeah, this is the thing. Like, like, do you even lift? Sort of look like you're in a T. Because I feel I'm like not, I'm not like, like I trained. I'm like, 
me is skinny natty like me but just like stage condition no 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 skinny natty is like do you even lift like no oh, mate show. off season really you wouldn't even have to think about it no nah, mate i look good in off season yeah. right is it is here is here right admit well that's josh that'll be the that'll be the intro here he is mr Crogan. Actually... w mba his, his Zoom's just crashed, everybody. So we do apologise if it, uh, if the the signal's not the best. Hi guys. <laughs> I thought my, you'd, uh... my computer didn't want it enough. It, it just just cancelled. I thought you'd got upset, mate, because we left you waiting like five minutes. I thought you'd just gone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And sacked it off. Right. right so so everybody, so this is for so anybody who doesn't know. No, we've got to introduce him. We've got to introduce him to the podcast properly. That's what I was going to go with. I said, introduce yourself. Go for it. Go on, mate. You done talking? You done? Right. What's going on, guys? Um, absolutely honoured to be here. Thank you for having me on the old potty. Uh, <laughs> my name is Josh Crogan. I'm a WNBF pro. Um, I won the men's physique overall at last year's Supernaturals and then went over to Vegas, competed in my first pro show, the pro world, and placed third. So, I'm not too shit, basically. No, you're not too bad. You're, you're a good natty, aren't you? You're a very good natty. Thanks, mate. Thanks. I'm a little bit better than, uh, than Finn. Yeah, a lot better than Finn. You're, 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 you're technically, Josh, you come in. And like, yeah, like you're just better than both of us. If anything, mate, this podcast, you're going to be taking over. This is, going to be this, is, this is my podcast now. Yeah, welcome to my podcast, boys. Exactly, exactly. But no, in all seriousness, we were going to get Josh on because I feel like we've known each other now for like the last, what, two years, two and a bit years. And it's always been the same sort of chats we have in the gym. And me and me and Finn have always said, like, we feel like you out of everybody we know, we seem to like just get on really well. Like, I think you're very similar to how me and Finn is, which I don't know if it's a compliment. It probably it might not. Yeah, uh, yeah. It might offend me. We're, we're not like, <laughs> mate. So, <laughs> yeah, it's not a good thing. Exactly. <laughs> So I thought you, you'd vibe well with us. So like we said before, this is going to be a bit of a trial, no pressure. But what we're probably going to be doing is like, if let's say one of us is gone, we could draft you in. If you're available in the times, we'll draft you in. And it will be almost a sense of like, again, I don't think anyone's going to go, oh my God, Josh was awful. Or Josh is the best thing in the world. Get him on more often. But I think it'll, it'll, go, through, it'll go well to go through some questions and just see how things are. So... Yeah, first question, mate. Then we'll actually get into a show recap because we've actually answered this. Yeah, we're going to go, we're gonna would go you through rather the be, weekend. Yeah, would you rather be a skinny natty? So we're talking, do you even lift, like, sort of look? Like, we're not talking shredded. Like, do you even lift or peak bulk, like, off-season, fat, face, you know? Like, like, Jake, like Jake Braley. Like yeah. Jake Braley all the time. Jake Braley, Mr. No Neg. I would <laughs> probably... I, I would go for that, like, you know, peak off-season, but... I think I would end up single very quickly because my missus, she really doesn't like peak off season, Josh, uh, at all. Yeah. I said, I, I'm I, a big I fan, you know? Yeah. yeah. Finn's, Finn's in a relationship there. They're both just very content and like Shannon's now third. So she's not, she's not moving on. No, Finn, no, Shannon's no, no. settled down. Finn lives the life of like a 40 year old. So, you know, they're both relatively content. Yeah, you know? Yeah. Part of, I love yeah. it, mate. It's part of it. Yeah, what I think you I go think... for Reese. Oh, I don't know. No, I, 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 I think it's pretty silly. Like you'd have to, you'd go peak bulk because you're strong in the gym. Food's high. You don't feel that bad. I think a lot of people nowadays make out that like peak bulk is so hard. Like, oh, I'm so lethargic. I'm so sluggish. In reality, you feel all right. Like, I'd rather yeah. be that and actually train well than to be skinny, natty. Like for me, natural. Oh, don't know about that. Yeah, no yeah isn't it? That, no that's the thing for you, natty. Nah, nah, nah. nah. <laughs> that just being skinny and hunt. That's what it is. <laughs> is that skinny natty? If we if we're thinking of it, like how I'm visualizing that is somebody who you know, like an 18 year old in the gym who doesn't train, who has, or has been yeah. there for two weeks and he's in a vest. Like that, I, I wouldn't want to look like yeah. that. Oh. But we've all been that. We've that, all been that, that was literally, that was literally me. Yeah, yeah. yeah now I don't wear vests. I'm just. Yeah, you yeah. you you don't wear a vest. You do still wear a vest, don't you? You got that Nike vest that you wear. No, no, sorry. I I mean more like you know singlets. I used to wear like yeah. the my protein singlets that were like. Yeah. Um, I did. Like we all, ten we all pounds did, each. I used yeah, to have every single colour. Well, Josh, but, the other day, but, that was massive. 
you must have wore. I think me and Finn called you out for about five different outfit selection changes. Yeah. Right. Right. So I'm gonna gotta clear this up. So Ultra Flakes, I think, is like very, very, very cold. Mm. And then as soon as as soon as it's not cold, it's red hot. Yeah. So you need an outfit for like every eventuality in between freezing not and really. boiling. Not really. Two outfits. You need a hoodie. Yeah. No. I know. I know. It's it's a, a tank top, a t-shirt, maybe a jumper, and then a hoodie on top. So what, four letters? That's yeah. what you wear. Nice the other day, day, or or, yeah. or yeah. I'd wear I'd wear like my North Face. You know. Okay. Yeah. Well, well, you, can't coat, in it. you can't wear a coat in the gym. Yeah. You get the piss taken out of you. Could turn up in a coat. Nah, I I used to wear a coat in the gym, and then I got bullied, so I stopped. Got bullied by That's Tanaya true. and L's Fitness. So I stopped. Yeah, oh. yeah. So Finn, yeah. And this, yeah, Finn, Finn doesn't like any uh, negative, ne- negative press. But anyway, the weekend, Josh, how was your experience? Was that the first time judging? Was it? I think you've, have you done it before? Yeah, yeah. I did the um, I did the first time as in I think it was July. So second second show. Um, yeah, we were all right. Fine. You enjoy it? Uh, it's all right. It's not quite. It's not quite the same as competing. Yeah. Uh, I, I, do you know what? I think it's harder than competing. I think it's more tiring because, yeah. like, when you're competing, you're literally on there for ten minutes. Whereas when you're you're judging, for a normal judge, I obviously started on the bench. Didn't you, I? So you got, you got I'd like, yeah. Let's be honest. You I, didn't I, I do like much judging. Know, two hours of not doing anything. <laughs> yeah, you were bench. And mate, what? what be honest. What, what were they about, like with the, the? They just choose you and go. Josh, you're on later. Or do you get to choose? He wasn't great in um, training. He wasn't performing, was he? Last week in training. Yeah, he wasn't yeah. yeah. Week. I've, been having, I've been having a really slow week, so the, the gaffer just decided that I'd be, I'd be better off making an impact off the bench um, coming on for Rimini after about 30 minutes. <laughs> Mate, you it were worked. benched by Rimini. You, you were benched by Rimini. You definitely oh, outperformed yeah. After, um, yeah. You definitely outperformed yeah. Rimini. You didn't, you didn't outperform your, your doppelganger, though. Yeah. Oh, my doppelganger. I can't believe that. You donut. <laughs> I'm like, like twice size of him. And you're thinking, oh, I'm not sure. Oh, Josh mate. is over there. Oh, he's like a big guy. Well. It was funny that. That's right. Cool. So go on. Do you want to give us a run through? How was your experience over the, the weekend? Were you uh, happy with the results? Obviously, you had a client as well. You had Phil competing. Shout out to Phil. Well, yeah, shout out Phil Hashug. We're, we're not gonna we're not gonna talk too much about that. In fact, if I speak, I get in trouble, you know? <laughs> um, so, yeah, judging experience, I thought it were great. Um, from, like, my experience as a competitor, when you go and get, like, when you go and ask a judge for the feedback, they're generally kind of like, just turn around to you and go, get bigger, and then send you on the way. Oh, have I froze? Or is... No, I've not froze. Um, yeah, so when I got offered the opportunity to, like, kind of start the judging, um, earlier this year, I was like, right, I'm going to do it. I'm going to actually give a shit and give proper feedback to people rather than just, yeah, yeah, just come back again next year and get bigger. Like, yeah. So, a little hand. bit of pride in it. You are? I'm interrupting, Josh. Have you seen the PCA feedback this year that you have to get? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. yeah. The most generic shite ever. Yeah, like, I, think, I think I saw like five everybody. people get the same thing. Yeah. So, Whereas, like on 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 Monday, so like the day after the show, I sent I sent one guy four minutes of voice notes. I'm like, this guy's not even paying for this. And like, I'm giving him some can absolute. I, can gold I dust. interrupt and say something? Because I don't get why people ask for feedback. Because I don't. You should you you should either have a coach or you should be aware enough yourself to know what you need to improve. I, I don't think, yeah. like, for example, yeah. the, there was a junior lad, I can't remember his name, but he came up to you and asked for feedback. And you basically yeah. said, you need, you, need, you need time, which is true. But also, he was against James, James Alabaster, who's an absolute monster. That's your yeah. feedback. That yeah, is all yeah. the feedback you need. You lost because that yeah. guy's a freak. Like, people need to be more aware but then again, he, of that. He's a junior, so being able to say to him, look, yeah, you've exactly. got to look at, like, your lineup that you're against. And look at like the people that are placed above you. I think he placed third. Yeah, so he, he didn't do good, that. Mate. He was good. He was really good. He looked. He looked great. Yeah, he yeah, he yeah. Didn't need anything? And he, it, he couldn't have been any better on the day. He just like I say he needs more yeah. time to improve and also hopefully not come up against James because he's free. Exactly. Like, that is oh, mate, I, th- I 
I, I think James was, apart from the guy that won the overall, I think James was my favourite physique of the day. Um, he's so thick. Yeah. He's so big. Yeah, if he, uh, James, if you're if listening, mate, the... fair play. Like, yeah. You know, yeah. I was saying to him, like, because he's going to do the world. Um, and I was saying, like, mate, pull off, like, and the thing is, well, he could pull off, like, it's not like he needs, like, two pounds off. Like, he could pull off, like, 10 yeah. pounds and he would still Another look five to, stupid. Yeah. Like, yeah. So he's got that much muscle. Like, he's not going to look, oh, yeah, you look stringy. Like, you're fucking huge, mate. Just get inside out and you won't be beaten. I can't imagine he'll be beaten. If he is beaten, then it's by someone stupid. No. Yeah. yeah the uh, the novice not, guy, man. the novice guy was very good. Yeah. Was he called Max? Max, yeah. Unreal. And, like, you know, like his, pre- um, his posing thing. I thought it was class. Do you know who it is, really? His routine. The guy from the PCA. Yeah, the guy that you showed me doing the moonwalk, yeah. Yeah, he won the yeah. PCA overall like a month ago. And PCA, they nowadays, they, they they share like the reels of their own posing routine. And his got loads of engagement. It got like maybe 50 comments like this guy. Because it was almost like you could tell he's practiced, but he's also just having a good time. Yeah. Like he was almost just having a bit of fun with it. And I quite like that because it wasn't as rigid. It didn't look like he spent every hour practicing it. It looked like he literally knows how to pose, poses well, has fun with it, and looks like he's enjoying himself. And I was exactly. like, this guy looks cool. So the fact that he was he won a PCO overall, then turns up at the WMBF and wins the whole thing there, like that's class. That's really good. So yeah. I hadn't actually seen one routine similar to the PCA one. Yeah, I think, I, it was the same. I think he did the same. Yeah, to what his little moonwalk and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, Ma- Michael Jackson on, did his moonwalk, little cheeky smile every yeah. now and again. Yeah, good. Yeah. No, I, was a... I, think he's a, I think he's a dentist as well, which is like yeah, a bit is. crazy, isn't it? Yeah. I only followed Talk him. Talk about day. all these people no, that are right. like, yeah, yeah. People all these got... people that are like, oh, I'm working a full time job. Oh, I'm, I'm meant to compete. Um, and yet you've got a bloody professional like he's a dentist and he's gone on one and overall. Uh, an untested show and then a tested show. No, like, what a no, boy. Animal. Fair it's enough. Has he been really fucked? I've never seen him. Yeah. I don't know. Is he a guy who's competed loads? He looks he's like he's really got enough, enough muscle to have competed like numerous times. He's pretty, right. like, he's pretty I think, mature. I think I think he did the PCA first time, as you know. Oh, okay. Fair enough. What? the? Is that what? What the one that he won the yeah. overall? Yeah, so that, yeah, yeah. I think I think that was the first time. I'm not 100 percent sure. So he's all, all he's done before is just look at teeth, and now he's like, ah, I might as well. Yeah. Step now, he just, now he just wins yeah. overalls for fun. Yeah, now That's he really turns up, wins overalls. Yeah, Little do you know, he's a, he's actually Ronnie Coleman's dentist, and uh, <laughs> he's got all his tips. <laughs> That's how he's he's got all the secrets. Modern day Ronnie Coleman's dentist. Fucking hell, imagine <laughs> yeah. that. Can imagine anything yeah. worse. Jesus it'd Christ. A, it'd be a nightmare trying to go in his mouth and he's just going, yeah, buddy. <laughs> it would be fucking hell. Right, so oh, yeah, shit. weekend. Weekend was good. Anything else that we, we kind of missed out upon? There's anything, probably, Josh, you feel like? probably one more person I'd say that was a standout. So we've got James, oh, we've oof. got the novice winner, and then... And then the men's physique overall. Yes. Yeah. He was unreal. Natty uh, Brandon Hendrickson, mm. <laughs> yeah, like someone uh, like that. Yeah, I think his men, his posing could just be it's not even his posing, it's just almost like the angle that he gets himself into that just needs to be adjusted a little bit. And he's he's complete, like, I won't get anywhere near him. I don't know, uh, I don't, I don't know. think he would nah, either. Josh, he's I think, stupidly good. I think, I think he's good, Josh. I think you're. I'm, I'm, I prefer you, Josh, if I'm honest. No, no, I think you've Josh, got a bit more. Josh, bit more I love you, Josh. Josh, I love you. Josh is so, so good. No, I think you've got a bit more maturity uh, in your physique. I think you, you, you're in far better condition. I, I think um, he's very good. It'd I actually good to see wanted you to get Joven on. I, I agree. Want, I wanted Joven on the podcast today. <laughs> <laughs> Just, just he's, still, uh, he, he's too busy on Fuad's podcast doing, yeah. doing something proper. I he's getting surprised. signed by NBW. That's what he's doing. He, mate, he, he is <laughs> Nego- he negotiating a contract. He is very good. Is he going to be up against? Is he up against Kes next week? I think he's good. This is this is another scary thing. I think he's going into the juniors. Oh, okay. Yeah. So if he's up against uh, Mr. Quayis, um, it'll be at the overall, which will be okay. exciting. And then have you seen that Joshua Joshua Ortiz? 
Like is Instagram Joshua at ease? Yeah, I think he's amazing. Mate, he's, he's so good. How the he- I honestly thought he was enhanced or like he's he. I can see why he's natty because yeah, he's yeah. not very big, very yeah. small. But his shape is like he's his, like his Javon. chest like but wraps even, around his shoulders. Yeah. It's it's insane. Yeah. And his waist is ridiculous. Like, I saw him backstage at the UKDFBA Heart of England show, and I kind of like just nodded at him because I saw him in the PCA shows last year. And I thought he looked shredded, but I thought, oh, maybe he's competing in like a different federation. Like he was in a hoodie. So I thought maybe he's here for somebody. He didn't look like he was competing. And that's why he wins the whole thing. And I'm like, wait, what? This guy's natural. Yeah. I was like, Fair enough. Yeah. It, it's wild. It's really, Man. he's really, really. Well, that's the same. So with I think that if Joven, anything, though. Yeah. Like if that Joven guy goes enhanced. So, like, my mate, Josh is like, Josh is really, Josh yeah, is but like I mean, alien, it's, it's like similar kind of thing though. If they, either of them, like, if they were to yeah. go enhanced, like, this is what we always say, like, they're the type of people who, I'm not saying they should do it, but if they were to do it, like, they're that <laughs> they're that good naturally that they'd be that good enhanced. You know what I mean? It's like when people who are very average yeah. naturally go enhanced, they end up being relatively average enhanced. Average. Yeah. yeah, it's like more often than not, there's obviously outliers, but more often than not, like those guys, they've got that much potential. It's like, obviously, if it's what you want to do and if you're willing to do it, like they're the people who should do it. That's not me saying do it, guys. I'm not a doctor, but, you know, if, if you wanted to do it, I think you've got you've got a right compared you can, to... You can be a doctor if you want, mate. I'm sure you can find it online. Yeah, probably could be. Be a dentist like Max. <laughs> Right. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, what have we got? Anyone else that we that deserves an honourable mention from the weekend? Obviously, Phil. Shout out, Phil. Can't right. Shout out Phil. I'm going to mention one more person. Oh, yeah. Shout out, Phil. We love Phil. Phil's awesome. Um, the ladies' overall winner. Uh, I think her Instagram's Natural Physique. Did you see her? The bodybuilder. Yeah, hang on. I've got to find an name. Yeah, she was. She's, the, the she's unbelievable. Yeah, she was very, very good. Yeah, I think. What's she called? Sorry, guys. They didn't. Far didn't in we haven't meant. They uh, didn't Josh tag her. Danny. Disappointed was. Huh? I'm disappointed. No one's mentioned our our, our best listener and uh, legend legend of the podcast, legend in person, Josh Bogdani. Oh the, yeah, Josh. The team go. Yeah, team go. Josh. Yeah. He, um, he, uh, you know the dude that finished second. Uh, Josh Ooh, said, uh, I can't remember exactly what it was. Apparently, he came up to us saying he he didn't prep. He, the the guy who finished second didn't prep at all. So I said to Josh, "You're only beaten by one point. You're slacking." And he said, "It's because when I turned around and hit a rear lap spread, nobody shouted boom in the crowd." <laughs> <laughs> Not too sure if you realise that that dude every time he boom. posed all his life, yeah. like boom, and he was doing the same, and it was like, "Wow, God, this guy's so fair, posing. To that to that Ruben kid, like he he's got a good amount of muscle. Like if he was probably yeah. 10, 15 pounds leaner, I think he would have potent. Well, he'd have pushed Josh a lot, lot harder. It was relatively close yeah. anyway, wasn't it? Um, with one yeah, point, but that's I like one of those situations one where it's almost like I don't want to be, I don't know the kid, but if he was a, maybe a little bit more aware of the standard and maybe he wasn't just like, mm. I'm fucking big, I'm going to go and win, he probably would have won if he'd have worked a bit harder, dieted a bit harder. Like, yeah. So it's one of those, like, it's all well and good being confident. And I think that's great. You should be confident. You should have an, a, a decent level of an ego in the sport. But also, there's a level to it where, like, if he'd have just been a bit more self-aware, he'd he'd have won that. So it's like, yeah, so Ruben. Like, oh. So, so that Ruben lad, he um, he he did the first time his show when he won the were it teens class. He won the teens there, and honestly, he came in looking the exact same. I think he looked at it and thought, right, I've won. I look mint. Mm-hmm. I'll just come and do the same. But even though you know the WMBF don't do qualifiers. It's still a British title, like it's still the standard of you know a British yeah, the standard, yeah, standard the is British very title. High. Yeah. What I would say though is the standard across the the show isn't that high because of that, but the standard of the top guys oh, and girls is though. very high. Yeah. Because you've got you've got yeah. people that are turning yeah. to a British finals, which is what it is, that haven't had to qualify. So obviously you're going to have a oh. massive, massive range. Yeah. But, yeah. That, that was my almost like criticism of it. Yeah. 
But I, I was just about to say, like, I think the show was very good. Like, I, I really like the WMBF. Again, I'm not affiliated to any federation. Like, Josh can't really say yeah, anything about is. any other federation, but yeah, like, it yeah, was. I'm good. not. I'm not affiliated. <laughs> <laughs> Nah, that's it. Um, we won't get into all of that, but that's one thing that I do think is a, a shame because I had quite, I heard quite a lot of people over the weekend like saying, "Oh, this federation didn't want me to do this show, or I'm not going to do this federation now because I've qualified for this with with WMBF or what." And I just think it's it's just a shame. It's what it is. It's the sport. It's politics. It is what it is. But I just think it is a shame that there's not many people that do compete with multiple federations once you do well with one. It's almost like, well, I've done well with this one. I have to stay with yeah. this one. Like, and I don't think it should be like that. And there definitely shouldn't be any, and in my opinion, there shouldn't be any pressure from that federation to say, you have to stay with us. Or if you go with that other federation, you're not competing with us or anything like that. Like Again, I'm not saying uh, that anybody I, has I, done I that. I completely agree. I think it does happen, and it's just a shame that it does happen. Yeah, yeah, you guys should see what I'm doing already for my pro card next year with some two bros judges. I've <laughs> seen you. I saw you with JT last night at the Arnold's. I saw you in yeah. JT yeah. Yeah. Into, the, into the toilets at the Arnold's. <laughs> Don't say that, mate. That gets said. That's not my, like if someone sends that. That's I'm not getting a pro card for the next three years. <laughs> oh god. Right, right. I'm gonna. Anyway, uh, um, we're gonna go. Should we go into the second part? I'll end this bit because it's yeah. running out. So I'll send you a new link, Josh, um, and then we'll get into some questions. Kick off part two. Yeah, part two. Right. Part we're gonna get into a few right. questions. Before that, Josh, I actually wanted to ask, I want to ask a few questions. I don't want it to be an interview because I don't like the, the podcast when they just get somebody on and they interview them. However, when it comes to, to last year, when it comes to, to winning your pro card, because I actually got a question from, from Kez saying, did you reach enlightenment when you received the hashtag WMBF <laughs> card? What was, if you could summarise in a, in a couple of minutes, what was last year like? It was a bit up and down, wasn't it? A bit of a roller coaster. Yeah, it was. It was. Um, for those that aren't aware, so I did five shows last year. The first two, I did the PCA Midlands and the UK DFPA Heart of England. Um, I competed in both of them shows literally a week after coming out of isolation. So when I stepped on stage, the physique was no bueno. It was you not good. You diet and you weren't coached by anybody. And then AJ saved you. And then AJ Guardian AJ came out of nowhere. <laughs> got a question about that. Told me. So, so Neil Morris. So AJ got interested. you peeled. Do, do you know what, mate? Just, just don't let me answer no, no, the no, question. Mate, mate, I've got a question about AJ. I've got a question about AJ. How come AJ got you leaner, but Finn, AJ, Finn didn't get lean with AJ? Finn could have been sharper. Did did Finn? Were you eating off plan? And yeah, I was not I don't. I don't adhere now. I do what the fuck I want. Exactly. Right, Josh, That's what I was going to say. That's all I'm going to say. So yeah. So I did them two shows and then there were like a, a three-week gap between them shows and then the UK DFBA British finals. And I basically, I just went to absolute town on getting inside out shredded. I lost, I'm fairly confident, we're around 15 pounds in uh, just over two weeks um, and brought a much improved package and still finished in the same position as I did 15 pounds heavier. So... Three shows into the season, I got three second places. Um, after the UK, the FBA, I was like, right, I've given everything that I could possibly do here. Like, my head were, like, gone, um, so to speak. So I got spoke to Mr. Morris in the gym um, said to him, like, oh, this is where I'm at, this is what I'm doing. And he said, right, we'll work together on, like, making sure that the WNBF physique is uh, is the absolute best, and basically all that all that we did was so kind of just take things. Sorry, you are suck off a few judges, pull a few strings. Yeah, yeah, you know, look the exact same, and then just bullshit a pro card. Fucking hell, it happens in all federations. What? Well, you know what? They, that, that's that's exactly what oh, we did. I had to sleep on, with Andrew carry Chappelle. On. Carry on. Then, yeah, basically, AJ just helped me with like the the peaking process because. Uh, if it was down to me, I think I'd have just done like Matt, what I'd done previously, which is like pull or drop shitloads of water, start taking peak max uh, by Strom and just end up really dehydrated come show day. Um, yeah, so AJ helped with that. I looked mint and won the, won the overall. Uh, in terms of like enlightenment and like how I felt after, it was, it was almost like a, a sense of relief 
that like that that goal that I'd set myself for like years before, actually achieving it were like nice. I, I, I'm doing that. I'm not wasted time. I'm not wasting time. I'm on the right path. I'm doing the right things. So not necessarily enlightenment. It was just kind of like a bit of a nod of like, yeah, keep doing what you're doing. Yeah. Don't. I think that's yeah. uh, weirdly enough. I think a lot of people overstate like what winning actually feels like. Like I went in that first show and I was like, I want to win the overall. When it happened, it was like a sense of relief. Yeah. It was like, oh, sick. This, this has been worth it. Like this was this was what I was looking for. It's you know, I don't feel like you ever get that sense of like being pumped up. Like if Liverpool win a game and it's a big win, I feel far more like pumped up. In, in the moment after I agree, Mark. when I when I won myself like because I've worked so hard and I've put so much time into this it's like well Grant I'm yeah. glad I'm glad yeah. this is work that that's exactly how I felt it, yeah. it will literally like oh thank God for that rather than like this is the best moment of my life I need to be present right here right now yeah yeah we're just like thank God yeah. it's done what's next did yeah, you did you expect Finn, unfortunately you can't yeah you know I mean? it's the next year. I don't know what you're saying, Reese. Did you expect to? Uh, oh, what's that? Reese like lagged out, ignore him. Did you expect to win your pro card? Because I don't, I don't think you did, did you? Because it was very, it was very much like a bit of a of a shock. Because also it was the first year of the WMBF being the WMBF UK, and obviously we were giving out pro cards, and it was a little bit different to how it had been done with the UK the FBA before. So, did you expect it? Was that in the goals? Yeah. Or was it like what the fuck? It, it it's low key. It it's always the goal, isn't it? Like if you if I start anything, I want to be the best at it. So turning pro and going to you know competing in pro shows was always the goal. I didn't expect it purely because I didn't I didn't realize that they were giving out pro cards at that at that particular show anyway. So that's kind of the only shock. Um, the guys that I competed against, so like in my class, there was Harry Ranson, who's awesome. Uh, really, really nice guy. He ended up going to the Worlds and he won the amateur uh, men's physique and then he won the overall for the amateurs as well. So the standard, it, it were there. And then obviously in the overall, I went against David Langsdale who won again at the weekend. So the the, the people that I went up against were very good. And I'm just considering fucking, that like... I'm sick. That's what you should be like. I'm just fucking... Uh, AJ got me looking so good. AJ, AJ peaked me perfectly. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? I actually, this is uh, exactly like that's quite a good little summary. We got asked by Josh Bogdanning, any differences to consider when peaking a men's physique athlete versus an open bodybuilder? I think me and Finn can answer that. But Josh, when it comes to, to yourself, you mentioned peaks. What did AJ what did AJ and you run? What kind of resulted in the best look for you? What did you what do you think you if you were to step on stage again, would you get would you do the same approach? Would you get AJ? Would you like would you peak yourself knowing what you gained? Things like this. Um what a coach myself. Yeah, I, I do back myself. I think I was just that like emotionally drained last year that I needed someone else to kind of take over. Yeah. Um, difference wise, what did what did we do? We did an eight day linear load. So the show was on the Sunday, and we started carb loading from the previous. I think it was Friday. Um, something that I like I've never done. I've always done like a depletion phase, and then kind of just having two high days and then competing. So that. That was different. Um, we we then went to Vegas after, and I kept AJ going, you know, for that. And we did a different kind of process, but that was purely because we we're traveling to America, a little bit of a load, but not too much, and then a big load whilst we're out there. Um, I feel like I've gone off and tried. What what was the question again? <laughs> what would you? I'm also was going to say, what would you do? Let's say, like next time, would you do a linear load? Would did you think that kind of really from the best that look? was necessary? So the linear load kind of works better if you're completely fucked in a hole at like let's say two weeks out. You're you're flat as a pancake. You know your cardio's high, food's really low. Then it's better to just kind of incrementally increase it every day, um, rather than just whamming in. You know, six seven hundred carb over a two day window. Yeah, and uh, that's the case. Kind of running the risk of spilling. Any situation, like you can never say I would do this because you don't know which situation you're going to be in, and like what obviously you just said there, like psychologically at the end, 
like you're not thinking straight when you're in that position like whether you're looking 100% or looking 70% you won't know because you're just fucked mentally so that's like obviously with me and Reese like we've got each other to be like right mate just fucking tell me what to do at this last point because I feel like shit and I don't really know what's going on because like there'll be points where like I guarantee it next year for both of us and obviously even for you Josh there'll be points where you look incredible but you'll think you look like shit and then there'll be times where you're having a day where you look a bit flat but you might have had a good session so you're like oh I feel really good today but you're actually looking a bit worse like you don't really have the the best sort of ability to assess that at the end on your own so even if you don't have a coach like just having someone who knows your physique like Jake would be decent for you so like obviously you train with Jake yeah 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 it's like your mates with Jake like Jake would be helpful in that last stint if you're like mate like what do you think like tell me what I should do in the last two three weeks whatever it is so it's good you don't you know you don't necessarily need to have somebody who you hire as a coach let's say at that point if you've got somebody who you trust like Again, like with Reese, I know how Reese looks when he looks good, when he looks flat, when he looks fuller. Like uh, it's sort of that kind of point where you've got that that person that you can just ask for a little bit of help at the end. Just takes that massive yeah, stress yeah. off of your own shoulders because you're not having to. That probably alone, just asking AJ and him being like, right, do this, do that. You're just like, oh, right, cool. I don't have to think anymore. And that just drops off yeah. so much fatigue and so yeah. much stress that even that alone, even if he told you to do what you would have done anyway, you're yeah. better because you're not making that decision. So yeah, I think that's massively important. But with what Josh asked about peaking a, yeah. an open bodybuilder or a men's physique athlete, I would generally say it depends on the federation because each federation is going to look for something slightly different. So like, for example, if you're doing, let's say, uh, if you're doing an MPC, like you're t- doing two bros versus, let's say, doing a WMBF or a UKFBA, um, you're probably going to be looking at a less muscular, sort of slightly fuller physique for a, a natural federation. Whereas if you're looking at MPC for Reese, like the goal is literally be as big, as full and as lean and dry as you can. Like, and if they don't, I'd say if they don't like it, like fair play, but more often than not, that physique is probably going to win if, if you, or it's going to be the, the better look. Whereas for a natural federation, you'll get marked down on that. And you could say the same for the enhanced federations, but based on how they judge it, I don't think that's the case. Usually the biggest and leanest guy wins even in physique or the, well, I say that, but ultimately it's the guy with the best shape. So like the guy that won the Arnold, yeah. like in combination. Yeah, of course. Like the guy that won the Arnold, his shape was a joke. Like he looked mint, but was he the the most conditioned on stage? He, Probably not. In which class? In men's. In physique. which class? Men's physique. Yeah, he won the. Um, Isaac. The pro show. Yeah. No, the guy that won the actual pro show. Isaac is. Oh, very good. oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That alley oh, guy. Mate. Yeah, yeah. I liked it. I liked him. Yeah. The Del Deli Ali. Deli Ali. Deli Ali. Muhammad Ali. Yeah. <laughs> Muhammad Ali. Deli Ali. Some Ali. Yeah. All those alleys are good. They're, they're, they're all good. They peak early, though, so, you know, you'll probably get maybe one or two Olympia shots, then they'll be really awful. <laughs> that's it. He'll end up then in Isaac, Motion, Isaac Motions or Isaac Francis, that's it. He's going to take over yeah. for, for, for the Brit. He is good. You know, technically, he's, he, yeah, like, that's what I mean. Like, yeah, he's fantastic. He's awesome. So, yeah, that'll be the, the plan. But, yeah, as Finn said, like, there's going to be differences between, like, and it's understanding kind of the class criteria and uh, and going from there. And then also how you look and how, like, the best you and, and the difference between how you actually look. Some individuals look better when they're a little bit flatter and maybe when they're literally just peeled. Some individuals look better with, with fullness. I know with myself, like, the, the worse I looked, I got better as fatigue and stress drops off. That's quite normal for the vast majority. Yeah. But some individuals will look better because they'll overspill and they'll they'll stress out as we said in the in the chat before this as finn was mentioning about like your brain being scrambled i remember for the overall i went in far more relaxed because finn brought me some food and he just said eat this like you need to be fuller eat this and I didn't even have to stress about, right, I need my rice cake at this time. I've got my meal already prepared. I've got this much water. Finn was like, here's some town fastics. I think there was like some cookies. And he was like, have 10 of them. Awesome. You know, and you don't, you don't stress. You just chill out. So, yeah. My, my, is- uh, I'm going to let you, I'm going to let you into a little secret here. Um, Before every show that I've ever won, the night before I've gone out for a Wagamama's just to chill out. 
Fair enough. Cheating on your diet. Yeah. AJ on said, my diet. Like, no what, what, one day out, going for a cheeky little, uh, what did I have? Chicken dombori, beef on dombori or something. And then uh, last year with the WMBF, I had a, uh, had a Nando's, full chicken and uh, like three rices before before don't, the overall. Don't mention Nando's. Finn will be like shitting himself and throwing up. He's not got a good experience with Nando's. <laughs> the only thing is with that though, like it's one of them, like if you've got the the personality where you can do that, because a lot of people, like yeah. even me, like I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that because I would be worrying, thinking like, what if I have any digestive stress? What if I feel like really sort of spilled or like my midsection's blown out from that? But if you can just think, right, I'm just going to go and do this and enjoy it. More often than not, you will look sound, but it's almost like yeah. that stress of the unknown. If you've been eating the same food throughout a prep and you know what digests well, like it's more. I think for control. me, it, like it's it's looking at like what it is. So for that, it's bloody it's rice and a bit of beef and not having the veg. That's all it is. The getting out of whatever accommodation I'm staying in and sitting and having a conversation with whoever I'm with at the time was far better for me than sitting in accommodation, microwaving meals or trying to make a bowl of porridge. Yeah. It just, yeah, it just helped bring me down, drop that stress and uh, yeah, and then end up having a good night's sleep. And I yeah, quite like it's, that. I quite it's not like, failed me. So you've got a good personality in bodybuilding, like that sort of more relaxed nature. You know, I think it can be really beneficial. The people that overstress and overcriticize and analyze everything. Yeah. Uh, when it gets to those kind of crunching days the the worst the stress is the main thing that's going to kill your physique on on the day right especially if you've nailed everything like if you're really really stressed out Mm -hmm. you can be as conditioned as you want you can be as full as you want if you're stressed you just won't look great and you won't and it'll show on stage in terms of being nervous and stuff yeah so uh, as we mentioned him earlier phil uh, my guy I think that's kind of what does him over a bit he's, he's a bit of a stress head yeah. and you know like for days before he'll be like literally just like walking around like just eyes wide open it's like are you all right mate are you okay you can just tell this guy is just stressed just needs yeah. to calm calm down and uh, it'll be sound as but it, it comes with experience like I've done enough shows now to to kind of you know not feel the nerves um yeah yeah makes sense mate it makes sense finn do you have any questions that you want to go through mate? yeah let's go through like we've got one through mine let's go through the ones you've been asked what have you gone through some of the ones you got asked yeah i got asked like two or three that i kind of went through there so chris and uh oh, Kes, sorry and then josh's question chris. Okay. Chris, chris, chris. i always say chris. Chris. <laughs> for some reason it doesn't it doesn't align i see his name and my head says it differently every single time it's really yeah. frustrating like, we always just used to call him Quace, didn't we? But now we just say Quace. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, Quace. So we'll, we'll ask we'll ask the ones that are for Josh first, and then we'll finish off with some ones that are just normal questions anyway. So this is from Harry Parks yeah. 1. What are Josh's long-term MP goals? So what are your long-term men's physique goals, mate? MP. Oh, men's physique. I thought you were on about members of, member of parliament. Um <laughs> <laughs> my my men's physique goals. So I'll let you in, I'll let you in on them. Um, next year I plan uh, I plan to do the uh, the JC World Tour. So starting off, going to be hitting up Abu Dhabi, competing in Dubai in September. Then if the UK can if the WMBF UK can get it over the line, there'll be a pro show in Birmingham next October. Following that, it'll be a Another pro show with the WNBF competing in, I believe it's Munich in Germany, um, but that might be moved. So, you know, maybe it might be that. It's either that or Switzerland. Uh, and then, depending on how well I do in them, if, I, if I'm not winning pro shows, I'm not going to go and compete at the Worlds. But if I am doing well, you know, placing first, second, third, whatever, I'll be going over to LA for the Worlds and gunning for a world title next November. Um so yeah, that's that's kind of like the short term. I think if I look too far beyond that, um I'll end up frying my own brain. But yeah, next 12 months that's what we're going for. Pretty wild to think that like technically you could be one of the best like like the best. He already he already is. Guy. 
I've I've yeah. got I've got goose and no, thinking no, about no, that. That's that's thing, crazy. That's thing. And like, no, it's wild because like I just view you as Josh Crog and a guy that we chat shit with yeah. in the gym. That's, that's it. Right. And like legitimately, you're, you're natural legitimately men already, already are though. It's not like you could be. Yeah. Like, you actually already are one of the best, which is crazy. Yeah. But then also, without being a dick, you have people like that Joven. That Joven just turns up, and like you say, like he would probably beat you because <laughs> he's just got a fucking shape. Yeah. shape. He hasn't got the maturity you've got and the condition, etc. But just his shape just carry would carry him through in uh, against most people. I mean, that's what hap- that's what we always say. Like right. just turn up out of nowhere, like. You know, there could be someone next year that Reese comes up against, and it's like, what the fuck? Who is the, that guy? Where's he come from? And like, you know, obviously Reese, you would expect yeah. to win a good amount of shows, like, or we hope so anyway, or be up there anyway. But you never know. Like, there are people that just come out of nowhere. Yeah, you know, shit. So yeah, but no, I think I've mm. obviously we've spoke about it before, but your plans are to stay natural as well, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I I won't be going down that in hand through. Um, it's I love watching, you know, like NPC shows and like obviously the Olympia, but on like a health front, it, it's not it's not a uh, it's not something that I want to dance with. It, I'll leave you to that, Reese, mate. It's, it's all yours, yeah, bro. Thanks for that. <laughs> Getting blood pressure PRs yeah, every exactly. week. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Nosebleeds, you know, all that stuff. But mm. uh, is there any, have there, you ever had like, any temptation? Is it literally just been a case of like, surely when you were like 20, 21, you were like looking at yourself thinking, I look fucking good. I'm like, I'm like, help on you. Because I feel like that's when most people have temptation. In their early days, they've got a few years of training. Shall, shall we have know? a little story time? You actually, um, yeah, so you actually took gear seven. We're actually a fake I'm actually, yeah, this podcast isn't going live. This podcast isn't going live. I took a course of adding when I was 18 so TRT's uh, that, that's fine though isn't it TRT yeah, yeah. well they don't they, no. the MBF don't ask for insulin or growth wait wait so wait we've ch- got a question on that we'll come on to that okay well, fair enough so when I was 16 um, I'd literally been training about nine months and I was <laughs> and training with a, uh, a... Oh, Josh, <laughs> be careful mate this? this is live all right <laughs> we're gonna put this out there I right? know I know <laughs> Well, the people can judge me all they want. No, it's, it's not bad. So I was training with an IFBB pro called Cecil Croysdale. Uh, very, very good. He won, he won like, you know, a British title, what, in the 90s. Uh, awesome physique. And basically, it was like, oh, what, what supplements are you taking? And I was like, I'm taking creatine, bro. Like, proper stuff. He was like, no, mate, you need, you need to start taking uh, this, these, these little blue pills. And I was like, all right. Gave him 20 quid, went home, Googled what it was, and it was a bloody Diana ball, a D ball. Okay. So I literally I sat on the end of my bed with this like this pot and I was like, nah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not doing that shit. Like, oh, you can die from you, mate. It, so that's that's you very very blood sure at that age. Most people just go, Oh yeah, yeah, this guy said it. Good on you. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, yeah. It's just doing, you know, five seconds of research that's not completely ruined my life. Going forward, imagine if I had to talk one yeah. like. Uh, what, what do you think it's quite no. unethical? Like, oh, massively. But Reese, like you say, there, yeah. it's not obviously it wouldn't completely ruin his life. But think about what he's achieved naturally, which you wouldn't have been able to do. Yeah. So, like, you yeah. could argue it has, it would have had a massive, massive negative impact. You could also say, would it have had a positive impact? Would you have gone down that route and whatever? But if that's not what you want to do, like, it would have had a massive negative impact. So that guy, whoever, whatever his name so was, Josh, yeah, what, absolute yeah. twat. Yeah, uh, what a twat. Yeah. <laughs> what did you do with the Devo then? Did you tell so, it? So did you? Did you? The oh, Devo, I, I put it in my, uh, I put Nothing. it in my top drawer, and I started feeding it to my dog every day, and my dog just ended up massive. Okay. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> and about about three weeks later, after I was like, oh shit, I've got, I'm going to go to prison for having this. I, uh, li- Actually, just poured them all down the toilet, and then I went to college, and I put the pot in one of my college mates' bags, and just like, right, that's it. He's done. <laughs> you were like, the, 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 and they went home, and like, son, why are you taking D ball? Like, <laughs> doesn't even go to the gym. Dad's like, the oh, dad knows dude. from back in his day when he trained, and he was like, fuck me, yeah. <laughs> the kids, these kids nowadays, <laughs> these college kids taking D ball at high school. That's, that's a very good. good. 
like lesson though that's a good lesson for like anybody who is quite young listening like just do like do your own research don't listen to what the big guy in the gym says because they might be they might be the nicest guy in the gym they might have the best physique they might have won loads of shows or whatever but it doesn't mean that they've got your best interests at heart it literally just means that they've probably just come from the same the same sort of situation where somebody who's bigs told them to take some they've started taking it then they've got into it and oh yeah i took this when i was your age so you should take it like not everybody's got the same goals or the same sort of ethics or whatever it may be so be careful out there guys you might have someone like reese trying yeah. to sell you some shit <laughs> oh, no. your clients were getting too good of results yeah that's what it is right um another one for josh so this is actually a good one because we were just spoke by it nearly this is from Dylan C Fitness. It's a little bit suspect from Dylan. I think he might be trying to be a fake natty. Uh, what's the process for drug slash polygraph tests for natty feds, UKDFBA and WMBF next year? Now, Josh, I don't know if you can oh. talk about UKDFBA. You might not be allowed. Um, not allowed to mention in UKDFBA. I'll tell like, you what. Oh. I'm going to out all of them, right? I'm going to tell you my experience with two bros. Have I told you both before? Two bros, don't it, mate? Two bros is horrendous. You told yeah, me. So, um, told me, yeah. So I came off the stage. So I did the two bros, uh, like natural, whatever it were, some shit. Uh, beat David Langsdale in the overall. Just putting that out there. Uh, and I came off the stage and rub salt in the wound. Fellow, after this weekend. Reese, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, a big, a big fellow that Reese is like getting really close with at the minute. Initials big, JT, big JT or something like that. JT. He grabbed me. He grabbed me on the shoulders. He went, "Josh, we need to drugs test you." I went, "All right, mate. Okay, that's fine." He went, "Are you natural?" <laughs> I went, the worst thing is, yeah. I actually thought someone was going to say their drug test was literally just going, "Are you natty?" It is. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So, he, yeah. he went. He went. Are you natural? I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm natural, JT. I'm natural. He went, all right. See you later, mate. Have a good day. Well done. Ah, so, oh, okay. Okay. That's that then. They just go Sit to by the grab you by the shoulders, squeeze them a little bit and go. Yeah. I think he's trying to, fight, trying to fight scar tissue. The thing is, yeah. there's people that everybody knows that isn't natural that's done those shows and won those shows. Like yeah. that, Josh, that, mate, that I, Luke Hume did a show and won it, and it was like he did the. It's like he's not natty. Everybody, obviously, he's not natty. So yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I've got, I've got stories that obviously I can't say on the podcast, but yeah, there's, yes, you there's can, not many natties that This <laughs> podcast is an open <laughs> space. Anybody? Yeah. <laughs> no one's listening. Yeah. Uh, anyway, anyway, moving on. So with the WNBA. Um, last year, they drug tested everyone that placed in the top three um, of all the classes. I can't tell if Reese is frozen or if he's just having a nap. No, no, he's just having a nap. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, the drug tested the top three. And then when I went to Vegas, it was polygraph two days before the show, which was quite a scary um, process. I was in a room with a Canadian guy. Uh, a big, big Canadian guy, and uh, he was like asking me all questions. And he basically goes, "It goes, have you taken insulin?" I was like, "No, no, I've never taken insulin." And then he asked me again. I was like, "No, I've never taken insulin." He's like, "Right, you're having some uh, weird activity. Like, what what's going through your mind right now?" I know. I literally, I just went to him. Well, you know, like in an off season when you're pushing carbs really high and like you're just kind of like really tired all the time. I'm just wondering if insulin would like help that one. <laughs> Obviously, I'm not taking it. He's like, she, he's like, Jesus Christ, man. Just thinking I should have. Get them thoughts maybe, out of your head. Maybe I should have taken maybe it. I should have <laughs> took insulin. <laughs> I, was, I was like 900 carb, bro. I took like 20 IUs of Lantus in the morning. <laughs> Is that okay? Like, you know, I've never taken it, but I took it in the morning because the carbs were so high. And he was like, yeah, dude, don't worry about it. Man. It's fine. Yeah, so, yeah, they're, they're, they're pretty stringent. Uh, and then after the after the show, the world's one, um, it's like a urine test kind of thing, but it was a very invasive urine test. Um, You've got to watch it. Say do, about that. do they want to see fluid leave your penis? Like, do they right. actually want to see... Urine, don't they like? Don't, don't tell you they get it in their own mouth and then they spit it into a yeah. tongue. I thought that's but what they literally straight in the mouth, little 
you know, to filter it and oh, then taste it. Yeah, that's nice. I can taste it. It's nice. <laughs> oh, no trend in there. That one tastes a bit strange. Then, there might be yeah. something in there. God, GT <laughs> sounding like an absolute legend for this now. <laughs> Just grabbing my Yeah, beer. that's the easiest <laughs> way of doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Ahead of the game. Oh, dear. Yeah, at the Worlds, I came off the stage and like my girlfriend came up to me and gave me a hug. And this guy out of nowhere just like kind of karate chops in between us and was like, get off him. He's got to go for a urine test. <laughs> oh, Jesus. We went into this disabled toilet that literally was covered in um, tinfoil, you know, so that there's no way that you could hide yeah. like urine samples or whatever. And he literally just like watching me piss. It's like, I've got a bit of stage fright here, mate. Like, just, um, just wait. Just wait. Just have no chance. No chance. Like, oh, yeah. The best bit about it, it was Andrew Jack that was watching me pitch. <laughs> oh, oh. As long as he, if he got his dick out in front of you as well, like, I'd have to say, bro, we're going to both have yeah, to do Can it. you like, get it out as well? Them. Imagine. <laughs> Come on, just make me yeah. feel a bit more comfortable if you get yours out. If you get fully naked and bend over in front of me, I think I'll be a bit more comfortable. Right. And um, some fluid. Uh, yeah. what about... Some fluid will definitely leave. That's for sure. <laughs> Don't know. What about the UK DFBA? I I haven't been drug tested by them before, and I've won a UK FBA junior British title. Um, so I can't really I can't really say about them. I think they do polygraphs, um, maybe a urine test. Do you know what? I'll, I'll ask Tom, and next time you get me on, I'll next uh, I'll see time we get you on, Josh. Come on, this is oh, a trial. Like I, I know, said, so if know, I do you know, well on my next shift, when um, when I competed, and obviously David won my class he got taken away straight away we well we had a photo me and him had a photo and then the guy was like david come on so i think it's if you look like you might not be natty so that's why they probably didn't ask you mate i think that it, because i because to compete with two bros the day before jt text <laughs> liam was like <laughs> i tested him don't worry he's natty I've touched his shoulders. We're up. I don't worry, mate. I shook his shoulders and then for sure that he is nice. <laughs> I quite like that insight into, into the drug testing field. It's quite interesting because yeah. I bet not many people know the process at all. Like it's a it's a different sort of kind of I don't know, it's not normal, it's not something that you would just normally kind of associate with like each federation is gonna be different. You wouldn't no, expect it, you sorry, know? he's put about he's put for next year. So the WMBF this year did like a questionnaire, didn't they, Josh? So the WNBF this year, I actually don't know fully, but I know that they urine tested seventy five percent of all the people that were there. That's a lot of that is, that's a lot of urine. That yeah. Yeah, it was like yeah. nearly two hundred people Someone's, that competed. That's a lot. That is a lot of urine, isn't it? Mm. Jesus, someone is taking the piss. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, God. I wonder where they dispose of it. Right, shall I put him in the waiting room? Get him straight in the waiting room for that. <laughs> yeah, Josh, for that actor, straight in the waiting room. Tell him that. Pull him you were doing, mate, you were doing so scene. well. You were doing so well, and we thought we'll probably bring him on again, but not anymore. <laughs> right. Um, so the next one uh, is this is from Harrison Smith PT. Uh, he's put in brackets, Josh. So, Josh, if you're one inch inside Finn and Reese is one inch inside Josh, do you go back or forward? Both. So, basically, would you rather fuck me or be fucked by Reese? Uh, I'd, I'd rather fuck you than be fucked by Reese. Yeah. Fair though, if Reese yeah. is one inch inside me, then he's already all the way in. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> True. There's no room yeah. to go back. Yeah, exactly. Dude, that's, I'm all out. I'm all out here, mate. That's all we've got. <laughs> so, Finn, you're, you're going to have a good time with Josh inside you. We're all going to have a good time. Harrison, yeah. Harrison's put, thought I saw Reese's name on a loaf of bread in the shop, but it said thick cut. <laughs> I think he meant... <laughs> <laughs> he didn't even get it, Harrison. So, yeah, that just, that just uh, tells you. I do get it. Harrison commented something like that before, like on a comment, and I like read it, and I was like, he said something on a question box, and I was like, 
I swear this guy doesn't look like he really trains and he was giving me shit and I was like fair enough like you know I know he's a new a new startup to you but I'm like he said something like this to me and I was like Harrison some people say some odd comments and it's like you gotta wear new stripes man like Reese is very what? easy to get him to nibble. You've got him there, Harrison. Um, no, Will, Will Razzo usually. Worry. Will Razzo gets Reese. Will once Razzo week. does, mate. <laughs> yeah, Will Razzo does. No, it was he asked me a comment, and I like read the comment. I was like, "What is he on about?" Like Harrison, I don't know who you are, mate. I'm sorry. I know you listen to the podcast, Harrison. But I don't know who you are, so I'm not too sure what your comments mean, mate. It's nothing offensive. It's just I don't get some people how they comment and stuff. I wouldn't uh, say that to speak, somebody I don't know. Speaking speaking of Will Razzo. Um, yes. I mean, it's not really going to work this, Will. You should have asked Josh. You should have maybe asked Josh the question, but he basically put, Josh, who would win in a fight? Guy Sisterino, or he's actually put Mike Crotch, but the, the name that he used before was Mike Roch. So he's saying Mike Roch. He got Reese with Mike Roch last time. Um, but I mean, it's not, I couldn't have really asked that because it looks like you, it would have been me that would look like the idiot, Will. And I obviously know what you were trying to do. So, Next time, comment or uh, send the, the message to, to Josh or whoever we may have on the podcast as a guest. Next, next, next time, if I come on again, if I'm lucky enough to come on again, I might put a question box oh, on. You should have, to be fair. You should have, yeah, you could have put a question box up. You should have done. But yeah, um, another one. Josh Jenkins has sent me a W. W, w means win. Yeah, but is that w, it? W is. Yeah, it's just like we got Josh like, on. Like a bit, w. big dub. Yeah, big, big, dub. big win because we yeah, got that. Josh on. You not play, did you not play your COD, mate? In yeah, lockdown? mate, I know what W is, but I was just like, why is it? It's not a question, is it? I'm asking for questions. It's not a question. Yeah. Oh, well, ask me. Josh, W. w. Yeah, 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 defo, defo. Yeah, big, big, big win. Big, big dub. Big dub. Getting Josh Crogan on the podcast, big dub. That's it is a big is. win. Right. Um, yeah. Phil, you know, Philip. What's his surname? Has- Hashuk. Uh, yeah, Hashuk. 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 He's asked, yeah. he's just put coaching spots available and then he's put in brackets, wind up Josh. <laughs> oh, yeah. is because I told him about what you said about me getting sacked in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, as soon as that... He was, was like, he was like, yeah, yeah, you're getting sacked and I'm going to go with either Finn or East. Yeah. So I was like, oh, cheers, mate. I'm actually really sad that you you didn't play. So. <laughs> it was but, yeah, fun. great. It's one of them, Breaking though, isn't it? Like you've got to make you've got to make light of a shit situation. Like all of us wanted oh, Phil to do that. well. None of us were happy that yeah. Phil didn't place. But what what we're gonna do? Cry about it? Like no, you no, have to make, you have to kind of yeah, you have to kind of yeah, yeah. So like straight away, as soon as yeah. Phil went off stage, I went Josh. He looked at me. I went, "You're getting sacked in the morning." <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, "Yeah." <laughs> so, uh, nah, yeah. but to be fair, I think I think there's a big like take home message there. I think in like the world of Instagram and like you know the world of coaching, we only really talk about people that are doing well or like winning shows and stuff. My first year of competing, I won my first show, and then I went to uh, PCA Midlands and placed fourth, and then I went to the PCA British and didn't didn't even get first call out or anything. And it was that that kind of like drove me like to go bloody harder, further, dig deeper, yeah, all that be shit. A Machiavelli motivation. Question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah true Machiavelli you, motivation. Learn, you learn more from your losses than you do from your wins. Like, what is it? The the wolf chasing up the hill is hungrier than the one the hung- on top. The, the hungry, hungry wolves run faster. Yeah. yeah. If you all, all, right these, all of those kind of it. sayings. Oh. Yeah, I just looked at it thought I got robbed in the Arnolds by a guy who was softer than me. And then I came up against a freak who was 45. He like, didn't get robbed in the juniors the who really shouldn't have been. He wasn't a bodybuilder. I've been robbed in both shows and I took it in a negative way. And I'm just, I'm, I'm such a hater and I'm so against everyone yeah. now. I'm just like, everyone's against me. All these judges that are out. happened and then you no. instantly like, jumped on gear. Yeah, yeah I was actually natty. Right I was natty going in. Yeah, I was natty. I was natty actually, mate. So, yeah, to 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 bring the luck I brought stayed natural. You know, I I I, won, I, I lost, but I also won. So, <laughs> yeah, right, I've got one more. All the question. last thirty seconds. I said, one more question. Right, one more question. And it's just a yeah. silly one. It's from Josh C. Fit. Whose PP is larger, Andrew Jacked or Reese Pearson? 
Now, I can guarantee it's Andrew Jacked. I didn't see it, but I, don't I imagine... Know, the amount of diuretics that they take. I'd say Andrew. I'd 100% say Andrew. I'd, now, say I'd like to compare. Knowing how small compare. Reese's is, I'd say Andrew. Yeah, first hand. And, but that being said, Finn, with Andrew, if we're both comparing at the same time, mine's going to be 100% as hard as possible, as big as possible. Finn, got, so I might, be more aroused. Yeah. I might be more aroused with Andrew. So you never know. Right, right we doing um, one more question, then we we'll leave. Do, we'll do um, another part. Right, so any more questions, Reese? I've answered all mine. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. We've literally got one or two then, and um, we'll go through it. So I got asked by a question called Joe Hick from Joe from Joe Higgins zero zero. W Y R have a less or more satiable appetite. Full stop. P plus C to both I M O relative to the phase. Man, he loves an abbreviation. What's, what's the first? What's the first three? Would, would, would you do, rather? Do, do, do we, do we, yeah, would you rather ah. have a less or more? Okay, there we go. And P and C, I was like protein and carbs, but no, it's pros and cons. Ah. So pros and cons for both. Okay, would you rather be hungry, so a hungry bastard, or a full bastard constantly? A what? what would you a hungry that bastard. Was just, we had to, to decipher that. We had to, to properly decipher. Joe, come on, ask us a question. Like would you a code. Not? So would you rather yeah, basically yeah. have a high appetite consistently or a low appetite consistently? And what are the pros and cons of both? Oh, my days. Well, pros, if you're not hungry, you're going to be, you're probably going to struggle to, like, when you're dieting, you'll be eat, you'll be all right. But then you're still going to get diet-related symptoms of being really lean. So it's almost like it's a bit skewed. But I think most people, I think people, I think this is actually massively overstated. I think appetite is very person dependent and it's very like movement dependent and how much demand you have on your body. I think there's some people who are just naturally going to be wanting more food and some individuals who don't. But I think people over accentuate what the actual, like what they are. They're like, oh, I'm always hungry. You're not, you're not always hungry. Like people are like, I'm so full. You're not, you just don't like it when food gets high. That's my opinion, at least. Yeah. I think most people are relatively in the middle. I always... Some are a little bit higher. I, I always say to people like I was speaking to someone about it today like in, in one of their check-ins like obviously we'll track appetite and I always have it in the questions that I want them to let me know but I always say yeah. we don't let appetite dictate what we do so no. you might be really really full but if you're not gaining weight and you need to gain weight because you're struggling to put on muscle or you know you, you're you really really skinny let's say and your goal is more muscle I couldn't care less if you're if you're full all the time you need to make to, to find a way to eat more food Likewise, if somebody who needs to lose fat is always hungry, I couldn't care less because you need to lose fat. So we need to find a way for you to manage that hunger. Like there's always ways to suppress appetite or improve appetite, but at the end of the day, it comes down to how strong are you mentally? Because there's times yeah. in a gaining phase where I really don't want to eat more food, but you find a way to get it in. Yeah, and especially when I was like new to training, because I used to be really, really skinny and struggled to eat. I always was that guy, oh, I can't eat enough. Yeah, because but the reason I couldn't eat enough is because I was... I must have been doing 20,000 steps plus every single day with work, <coughs> playing football and stuff. Like, you can't eat enough. You've just got to find a way to get it in. And then vice versa, yeah. like, in a contest prep, we're all hungry. Of course you're fucking hungry. But you just suck it up and you, ca you carry on. You don't just eat to appetite. So I think yeah. as much as that was quite a good question, I think there's, it doesn't matter which, which one you are because you do what you need to do for that phase. So whether you've got a crazy appetite all the yeah. time or not an appetite, it doesn't really matter in, in the sense of bodybuilding. If it was just in the sense of being healthy, I'd probably say less of an appetite because you're going to struggle to put on as much body fat, which for the general pop is going to be healthier. But for bodybuilding, it doesn't really matter. You just need to do what is required in that given time. Yeah, agreed. And then, Josh, is your client Therm Thermitage Fitness? Yeah, I think it is. Thermitage? Oh, oh. So Tom Hermitage. Okay, the real master but is what he loves. He loves, he loves tagging us. He loves tagging yeah, us. The real. He loves tagging us in a reel. Yeah, he loves tagging us in a reel. So, so you can only eat one meal for the rest of your life. What would it be? So, Josh. Uh, right. You know, if I was to say chicken and rice, could I have my chicken in a different way, or would it have to be exact same, bro? Uh, and also, am I a bodybuilder in this life, or am I just no, no, you know you, vlogs? You, you just got it right now. One meal, select it. Ah, full crumble with custard. <laughs> you fat <laughs> bastard. <laughs> if I say you were literally going, can I say chicken and rice? No, right. <laughs> I'll go with the opposite then. 
<laughs> I'll go with apple crumble and custard. <laughs> yeah, something completely different. Because if you think about it, apples, five a day, mm. custard is eggs, isn't it? So protein. Yeah. It's just a bit of crumble. Yeah, it's found a loophole. No, I, I, I think me and we me and Finn have answered this before. And we both said like chicken and rice. It's the, it'd be the easiest to eat constantly. It's one thing that could sit well with you. You could manipulate the servings because you could have one grain of rice and just chicken. You know, you, you could. You just, to be fair, you, you could say chicken and rice, and then maybe like some olive oil, or something like that. So then you can you modulate could also, that content. Yeah. I imagine it off season, like nine hundred to a thousand gram of carbs. This is yeah. a bit of a what did you say, Finn? A bit of a loophole. You could say loads of different foods and just leave leave food. So you could be like, oh, oh my, my favorite meal, meal, my favorite meal is chicken, rice, eggs, yogurt, cream rice, beef, whey. cream, of, like <laughs> just have all that as my meal. And then when like you literally just have what you fancy out of that out of that meal, you just leave eighty percent of it. Just, just out of curiosity, what's your two's go-to rice? Jasmine rice. Jasmine. Jasmine. Ma- microwave, or do you make it yourself? I microwave. Make it myself. Josh, right. what's, your, what's your go-to? I, I mate, I'm specific as I am Tesco's basmati rice microwave. Basmati. Right. I like basmati no wonder, nah. no wonder you can't get your food high. Digestion in the bin, mate. After that Tesco mm. basmati rice. It's it's elite. I don't. And do you know, know what? If you're feeling if you're feeling a bit bougie, mix it with the jasmine. Oh. But, oh, I couldn't mix rice. I'm not a fan of that. I wouldn't be able to do that. What's, I'm a, too what's the most rice that you've eaten in a meal? Oh, oh. <laughs> we're talking about packs. We're talking about it in the waiting room. I've had two packs before, so I've had like 88 carb twice through jasmine rice, so it'd be 500 grams. I've had that before. Yeah, I remember lot. when I was ill last year. No, that's not a lot, but I've never really tried to like, I don't eat any, I always eat the same food. So that's only when I was ill. And I remember I like combined two meals. Yeah. But on like a, if I'm having like a really busy day with loads of PT clients, I'll have, I'll have 500 gram of rice and like... 250 grams of chicken. Gosh, how it. are you, Josh? Oh. How are you as good as you are? Because I don't do that shit. You, like, every time I talk to you, it's like, I missed a meal here. Josh, Josh here. is, he just, he misses stuff all the time, but he's yeah. just elite. Talking about this, like, redemption coming for everything next year after finishing yeah. third, like, top moving and, up. And here he is eating 500 grams of rice in one yeah, minute. Yeah, exactly. Like, mate, you're, you're supposed to be like peak off season. Are you even bulking right now? Oh, <laughs> mate, don't even help me. So like since moving, since moving into like field. the flat with my girlfriend, phase. it's just been you're running a maintenance are, phase. Is that what you're running? Barely. Um, I did a mini cut and got down to like eighty five and a half kilos, and then the plan was to like push up and get into like you know mid nineties. I think I'm still chilling at like eighty nine. Yeah. Very, it's very, it's very light that for me. Is your training going well though? Is your training like in a good spot though? As a result uh, of that, I felt. It's it's definitely the strongest that I've ever been. So I'm not necessarily asked. No, that's what I mean. Like I feel like a lot of people put pressure on themselves, and with like your level, you don't need to be like you don't need to be five kilos heavier next year. Exactly. You know, like you're not going to be. Oh, well, I was just you about just to, to be say better. that. We obviously yeah, spoke about it, didn't we, Josh? Like they said that you you shouldn't be getting any bigger. That's what like the the feedback was from world. So if anything, you probably don't want to be pushing excessively. I don't, I don't. I, I like, I think my, one of my skills is to get my waist as like tiny as possible. I got down to like 27 inch last time and in like my off season, it was like up at 36. So that's a lot of weight come off my waist. Mm. I don't want to have to do that much work next year. Not that I'm lazy. I'd just be doing it along the season. The more it makes more sense. It's the same the with me. Like, I, the reason I've done this diet that I've just done is so that I don't have loads of work to do in the prep like if i've got yeah. like, say 30 to 40 pounds to lose it's going to be a lot easier than losing 60 to 70 pounds like it's just being a bit smarter yeah. at the start and again like you say you know, you're more experienced you've done enough preps now to know what sort of works for you where you want to start you know you kind of know what you need to be doing how much where about your stage weight's going to fall like all those kind of things you, you learn from it you know each show that you do don't you or each prep that you do yeah definitely. Right, are we done with questions? Yeah, we are done with questions. 
Right, Josh, do you have anything that you want to ask or anything that you want to add or any places that you want to plug? Do you want to plug your coaching? Go uh, go ahead, mate. The floor is yours. Yeah, well, I guess just give us a follow on Instagram. Um, my, I, I am making an effort with YouTube content. For instance, yesterday I filmed a 10,000 calorie challenge, uh, which I'm not hey, going to tell you if I did it. No or wonder you're fucking <laughs> really struggling to gain weight. <laughs> <laughs> Josh, you're a fraud, man. You are a fraud. What did what did you eat in the calorie challenge? Come on, give us a bit of an insight. What were your food choices? It weren't that bad. It weren't that bad. Um breakfast bad Matty Rash. pack of pop tarts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Matty Rash one is not nah, nah. <laughs> and nine bag nine bags of rice. Um out of five guys. Uh, I think the hardest meal that I, I, I did was a hundred gram of peanut butter on two bagels. That was um, oh dry. Mate. That was painful. Should have got some jam on yeah. there as well. That'd be nice. No, no, I, just that. Maybe yeah, should have had jam on it. That'd been good. Should have had jam on it. No, I, I put a banana on that. Kind of um, did the job. Uh, I had five guys had pizza, um, Ginsters pasties. <laughs> no, no idea. I've never <laughs> okay. heard of it. Mate. Smashed a few of them. How do you feel? It was, today? A, it was an interesting day. How do you feel? Um, today? My bottom is not okay. <laughs> Gain and pain is ruined because you've got 10k calories. You now will struggle to eat 2k today, tomorrow, and like probably for like Saturday before it just falls out of you. And then you'll be like, oh shit, I'm, I'm not in a better position. I'm actually, my digestion's fucked. By Sunday, oh, this is by different. Sunday, I'm going to lose my pro card. Yeah. By the time this podcast goes live, hey, you've already lost it because Robin. you literally had D-Ball in your hands at six. Uh, we we I, all know like that body. D-Ball had eroded, it was kind of gone Inter-sized. straight into the <gasps> Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> just becomes through the skin. That's why you dealt with so good. Yeah, exactly. Right. So we'll wrap it up. Josh, it's been a pleasure. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Um, I think it's been a good, it's been a good hour and a bit. Um, have you enjoyed yourself? Oh, it's been lovely. Thank you for thank you for having no, me we'll, we'll definitely get you on again mate it's been uh, it's been class i've enjoyed it it's been a good little break i just chat to finn constantly about the same shit so to chat to somebody who's a bit different it's been nice it's been so refreshing not to talk to finn so yeah very good very good right leave it there josh again thanks for your time finn thanks for your time reese thanks for my time that's yeah. it we'll go with that Cheers, anybody reese. have any questions feel no. free through not no not you say any outro any story Shut types up. anything like that come you on just, or you want just to come back on ask just us just angle up <laughs> we'll catch you later bye bye thanks guys <laughs>